Yeah, she moves well. Welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, I had a BMW XM and I liked it. And I felt like I opened up people's eyes to why the XM might be an underrated automobile. And I said I was interested in getting one. Cameraman Ashraf said, don't get one. So what did I do? I got a BMW XM label red. Um, I know, I know I was saying that the version to get might be the regular XM. However, how would I know without trying the label red version of the car? So today behind me, we have the 738 horsepower, 1000 newton meters of torque and top speed of 180 miles an hour with the driver's package, BMW XM. Now, those stats are incredible and you might think, oh, well, a lot of cars do those kind of figures now. Well, this car weighs 2.7 tons. 2.7, can you imagine something 2.7 tons barreling down the road at you at 180 miles an hour? It's insane. Um, the engineering in this car is actually a marvel. They managed to make a 2.7 ton vehicle feel significantly lighter and it still feels pretty comfortable when you're riding around in it. So let me give you a quick tour around the car. First things first, I've shown you the regular car so I'm not gonna go too in, but you have the iconic glow grill. So these sections of the grill go up. Um, I, I, I did not dub it the iconic glow grill. That's what BMW actually called it before people attack me in the comments. Um, and in this grill, you have a label red badging, letting everyone know that you have the fast and expensive version of the car. Well, more expensive version of the car. Around the side, you also have label red badging. Here you have your charge port where you can charge your 25.7 kilowatt hour battery, which will provide you with 50 miles of electric range if you're driving sensibly, or you can just use it for that hybrid boost and that 1,000 newton meters and 738 horsepower. When you come along the side, you have this black panel here. I think the car actually looks better in black because it hides this black panel. However, when you get the um, XM label red, this is actually supposed to be red. So whatever you do, do not spec this in red. It looks atrocious. Get it in black at least. I personally wouldn't go for gray. Again, I would go on black on black. I think it just makes the car look more sleek, more elegant. The car is massive, as you can probably tell by me standing next to it. I'm six foot. And before anyone tries to debate it in the comments, I am six foot. Um, and it's, um, it dwarfs me. When you park this next to an Urus or a regular sized car, it just makes it look ridiculously small. But if you come up close, I'll show you the interior and show you why the label red XM is slightly different. So you get high quality materials everywhere as you've come to expect. You now get red vents, red stitching, red stitching on the seats and this car comes standard with a red seating option although you can change it. So it just makes the car look a bit more aggressive, more bright inside. You have your prismatic roof again, this time with a slightly different pattern to denote the fact that this is the XM version of the car or the label red version of the car. If I open up the back seats, you will see my son's child seats and enough space for adults in the back so I can sit behind myself comfortably. That is actually my seat all the way back and it's absolutely fine. But I've shown you this before, so I'm not gonna get too into it. Let's talk about the label red badging. So BMW previously used competition logic. So you'd have the regular M car and you have the competition. Now customers just thought the competition was the top spec car, which in fact, that wasn't necessarily the case. Competition just meant the car was refined and tuned for on-track performance, which compromised driving around in regular streets just because it was slightly more uncomfortable. However, BMW have done away with the competition logic now and they've used label red to denote the more powerful version of the car. So no longer do you have competition and the regular version. In fact, now you can take this car and adapt the suspension so drastically you can go from severe comfort to severe discomfort, if that makes sense, in comfort and sport plus mode. So again, no more competition badging and I think label red badging was first used on this as a test to see how much it appeals to people and we might see it on the new M5. But hey, I don't know, we might not. If you come round to the rear, you have your XM label red badge here. I personally would take that off as soon as I get the car. So um, if you see this missing in the next video, you knew what I, you knew? You know what I did. <laughs> but yeah, that's the XM label red. It's pretty cool. I'll give it a start up. It doesn't sound too different as it has the same engine as a regular XM, but it has a little grunt to it. So I'll start it up and you can take a listen. So before I continue the video, I've just got one thing to show you. Um, this little tool is incredible. This is called a uh, Kali Universal OBD adapter and you can plug this into your car so you can do several pretty interesting things. Let's jump in the Urus. Uh, we'll plug it into the OBD port, which is underneath here. So we ignition on, the car starts up as normal, but you don't need the engine running to do what I'm about to do. 
From here, you just open the Carly app on your phone and you select the car you want to um, connect to. From here, uh, you connect it to the car. It's very seamless. It works via Bluetooth. Once it's connected, you can um, diagnose any faults of your car or you can just monitor um, certain levels. For example, you can see uh, the battery charge level or like a few years ago when my um, SVJ broke down on the motorway, I was able to use the Carly to clear the faults just so I could get it running so I can get it off the road. But there's a lot of fun things you can do as well. For example, you can code uh, new things into the car. So it checks your car for compatible units for coding. So while the app loads up what coding options I have, let me just quickly talk you through some of the features the app has. For example, you can run a used car check on a car so you can punch in the license plate or more interestingly, you can plug the device in and then you can scan the device to make sure there's no mileage manipulation you Can diagnose any issues you have, anything from ABS all the way down to the rear axle system. It allows you to make sure your car ownership experience is as smooth and as exciting as possible. But in my car is brought up several things that I can code. So for example, if I go here, it will show me a, a screen showing each parameter and what I can do to alter it or make it my own. I can do things like a door unlocking, making sure it's only the driver's door that unlocks. I can, I can change automatic unlocking. This is really good if you live in like a high theft area, you can turn that off. So when you walk near the car, it doesn't unlock. And also they won't be able to clone your key from your house. Um, if you scroll down, you can also do things like uh, folding mirrors, whether they close or open when the car's unlocked and locked. I want to do something a bit more personal to me. So you know when you're in a car and then you tap on the indicator and then the indicator blinks three times for like a, a gentle a gentle nudge into the next lane i want to change that setting from three blinks to five blinks in fact instead of five let me go for four currently one touch turn signal is on three i'll select four so when you're ready you just press code now and then it'll write the code to the vehicle and it's um it's literally that simple it says coding was successful so just restart the car press ok so now the car's restarted, let's just check. If I one touch the indicator, four blinks, <laughs> epic. Now that is just a, a quick example of some of the things you could change on there. The indicator thing is cool because that's something that I always think about cars, like why is it only three blinks? Three blinks isn't enough, I need four. Not only does it make sure your car stays operating in tip top shape, uh, it will save you in moments of peril, like it saved me. And then um, also, it will get you customizing. You can get your indicators blinking as many times as you want. Well up to five. So now we're in the XM. When you pull away, it pulls away in electric mode. I have just over 50% um, battery charge. That means I have 33 miles of range. So 50 miles doesn't seem impossible. I've even got the AC running and my cooled seats running. The seats are very comfortable like in the regular XM. But again, I've given you a tour of the interior of the XM before. If you want to see that, click on the link somewhere here. I'm going to put it there. Um, and then that will show you around the regular XM version of the car. But this is the label red. So do you know what that means? Performance. So let me press my M2 button. The shortcuts you can um, configure to make your uh, preferential driving mode. Uh, so M2 is my more powerful mode. So the big difference with the XM label red is the sheer amount of power the car has. So 750 horsepower, despite this car's weight, makes a huge difference. Oh Jesus. That's, it's a bit too fast for its size. It feels un, uncertain. Jesus Christ, yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily the kind of car that you want to be driving fast in, but it can drive fast. So um, that 750 horsepower is delivered via the 4.4 liter, um, not naturally aspirated twin turbocharged V8 um, in a company with the hybrid system. So uh, it's a similar hybrid system in the regular XM. They've just beefed it up and they've retuned the engine to make it a bit more responsive. Also, the ride seems a bit more sporty. It's a bit more firm. A lot of people complained that the um, XM and the, was already firm as it is. When I drove the XM, I didn't think it was too firm, especially compared to the Urus Performante. However, this car does feel firm. But I must say the Earth Performante is still significantly worse. And it's funny because a lot of the reviewers that I saw talking about the Earth Performante said it's comfortable, said it's easy to use, said it's blah, blah, blah. But then about this car, they said it's uncomfortable, which I don't really understand because this feels absolutely fine to me. So apologies in advance to my cameraman, but um, I'm about to see what the XM label red can actually do through some corners. So um, I'm in a sporty mode. I've put the suspension in comfort because the car is so heavy in Sport Plus, it just bounces too much, it's, it's too firm. 
So um, I'm in comfort now. Uh, everything else is in sport, I'm sport plus, and uh, we're gonna see how this car performs, shall we? Pick, oh, Jesus Christ. Pickup's good. It's very predictable what the car's gonna do. Direction change is nice. Whoa, for a big car, 2.7 tons, heavier than a Hummer H3. And I'm moving like this. That is absolutely incredible. Wow. Mm. Yeah, she moves well. Let me slow down. Let's see what it's like um, on launch. I think launch control is um, something that you kind of have to test out when you're um, driving these cars. So let me go to my M2 configuration and let me change my uh, DSC to uh, MDM mode and then uh, everything else in Sport, S3, uh, Sport Plus, let's see. That wasn't launch control, but it was fast enough. I feel like I don't need to do launch control. That was so fast, but let me see. Oh, more country roads. Let's try some more. Okay, three here. You know what? It actually feels really great as a country road car, despite the size and the weight. It just seems to hide it so well. And that's one thing I was trying to explain to people about the new M5. As someone who's been in one, um, I can tell you, it feels a lot more compliant than the previous generation, just thanks to all the tricks that they're doing to make the car feel smaller and make the car feel lighter. Like this car, 2.7 tons, seems to feel significantly lighter. It's just, you can throw it around. But yeah, I think uh, this car, for the extra money, you are getting a ton of performance. The regular XM performs similarly though, you just don't have that amount of torque and horsepower. So um, I like it. I Again, I don't really understand why journalists were so anti BMW XM. I personally think that it's probably one of the better cars I've driven in terms of SUVs in a while. It's comfortable, um, it performs well. I don't mind the looks, um, but I don't know. I don't know, I just think that it, w it became a thing where it became cool to hate on this car when it's actually all right. Now, the label red is significantly more expensive, so the regular XM is absolutely fine. This is a bit over the top. But similar to getting a, a G63 Carbon or Magno Edition, you do pay a little bit of premium. Apart from in this form, the premium is massive. But um, yeah, if you want an XM, I would just say go ahead and get one because I just think the car's, I think it's incredible. Not many cars with this amount of space for five grown adults in the car. Um, and this comfort can do what I just did there. So what is this competing with? There's really nothing. G63, but a G63 can't handle like that. It's just a completely different style of car. And Porsche have announced they're bringing out a new SUV that's bigger than the Cayenne. So I think a lot more brands are gonna start bringing out these heavy V8 hybrid SUVs that are like this size, almost Escalade size, just to um, open up the market a bit more. But yeah, I think this car's great. So, why did I spin? I don't know. Uh, do I think this car is worth the premium over the regular XM? 170 grand is a lot to spend for um, more performance. However, the performance does make the car better at overtaking and better at doing the cruising stuff. However, I think you get a very similar experience with the regular XM and you can save yourself um, like 30, 40 grand. So, I don't know, if you really want an XM, you can get the regular one, but if you want the rare one, if you want the special one, go ahead and get the label red. Personally, the regular one would be all right with me, but I'm not complaining that I have a label red here so that's all I'm saying also from the last video um, the sour apples commenter that um, I have noticed is the wobbler so it hit me up uh, I got a little surprise for you in the least weird way possible and um, oh look grapes welcome welcome to a vineyard <laughs>